installed there. The uh, repeater has been, uh, unfortunately, uh, very quiet lately, so hopefully when you're tooling around town, you can uh, rattle the cobwebs and uh, wake people up here. Well, the Mach-E is my new second vehicle. The truck's still with us, don't worry. But uh, I wanted a radio in this vehicle as well. And of course, uh, as hams do, uh, we're trying to figure out how to get that thing run. So the nice thing about the Mach-E uh, is that there is a fairly easy access panel that you can snap off right under the frunk. And of course, the frunk is the, the opening in the front here. Uh, so if you pop the hood and you pull this top panel off, you almost have all the access that you need to get power from the battery uh, into the cabin. And I'll show you uh, what I'm doing here. So I've got my power and you can see my coaxial. That's uh, going to be uh, for the um, SO239 uh, connector that I have. Uh, it'll be mounted on the lip. Uh, and I've got it run through this gasket. And this gasket is actually part of the build uh, and it lives right up under here. And see if you can see that small black hole kind of in the middle of your screen there. It's next to the large rubber boot that's passing through. That black hole passes directly in to the passenger cabin of the Mach-E. Uh, and you've got power right inside of your Mach-E. And I'll show you where it passes through under the dash as well. How's it going, Cash? So inside the Mach-E here, uh, I'm in the passenger footwell. And what you'll see right here is the fuse box. If you pull that plastic panel off, all the fuses and uh, wires run into it. But farther up under here, and it's gonna be tough to see, there's that blue carpet that's up against the wall. And you'll see kind of uh, to the middle left of your screen there, there's the beginning of that rubber boot that we just saw on the other side. Right up kitty corner to that is where that hole passes through. So you can actually, without any destruction, no, no chance of running into other cables, you can push it through there and then you can run it right out from under the carpet. So, all right, let me show you the final product here. So uh, the wires here running mains over to the battery. Uh, those are not hooked up yet. I didn't want to short anything out while I was connecting, um, but I'll show you how to do the battery in just a little bit. That's a little tricky as well. Down under here, I'm going to show you again. If you follow the wires, I'll try to move them out of the way. You can see I'm running to that gasket. It's a little bit hard to push in once you've got three wires running through it, the small coax cable and uh, the two uh, large gauge power wires, but it will go and that'll seal back up. Okay, now the fun part. So we're going to switch the positive wire here coming directly from the battery terminal here. It is fused at 15 amps. The uh, FTM 500 never draws more than about 12, so we should be good there. I could swap it for a 20, but I think I'll leave it at 15. Anyway, with all that being said, I, I put this, few, this relay in here. And this relay has two connections that are running back and under the kick panel up to my center console where the power point is. So when I, when I turn the ignition on or push the push to start in the Mach-E, uh, it actually causes the relay to close and that actually energizes then whatever we have fed in here. So get you down to the Mach-E center console here. So underneath the shifter and the parking brake, uh, there basically you're gonna pull up on that trim piece. It uh, is four clips. Under that, there's this cup that it sits in. Those are four bolts that I've removed and that gets you access to the center console. And why I'm in the center console there is that 12 volt, volt power point. So the 12 volt power point is what I'm using as my timer. This will prevent my radio from uh, draining the battery and it gives me auto power on and off, auto power on and off, because what it does is after 15 minutes of walking away from the car, it shuts the power off to the power point and we're gonna use that power that is fed to the power point uh, to switch our Bosch relay. Uh, this relay has two terminals that are both uh, powered when it's switched on. Uh, and then the back terminal, and I think that's number 30 on this Bosch relay, uh, is actually the one that you uh, put the um, put the switched uh, wire on. So I'll put the feed back here on the back, and then this will head uh, into the radio here under the panel again. This black wire uh, is a little bit short. I wish I would have planned a little better there, but uh, we're using the wire that came with it. So I'm going to extend this wire, uh, and that's going to go down here and then along back to the uh, to the uh, radio as well so one more look here and everything's buttoned up so uh, we've got the power running down you can see the black and the red wire coming from behind the firewall down under the rug uh, I've got the black wire uh, basically just terminated to an Anderson 30 amp power pole here uh, I'm using our friendly neighborhood power poles of course so that I can easily disconnect this and hook up other radios and peripherals uh, without too much trouble. So I like that idea. The 
amp, the power pole is still switched through my relay system, which is awesome. Uh, I just cleaned up everything else here. So I did add a uh, blank uh, spade connector over the center uh, conductor just to insulate it so that uh, nothing fell or touched it. Uh, I think that's always a good practice if you have one that you're not using that you know will be energized. Uh, just slide one of these on here. Uh, it'll lock it in place and that way you know it's not going to short out. So this is all buttoned up here under the kick panel. That means that our power is now run all the way back under here and you can see the connector uh, lands right here next to the radio. So now we need to attach the radio to the floor and that's our next task in the Mach-E. I wanna show you my decision here on mounting this. So uh, I saw a couple of different options here. One, I could stick it up under the kick panel, but it was kind of visible there and I really didn't wanna look at this thing and the speaker would be kind of in an awkward angle. I'm gonna put it under the seat. So that's where I ended up deciding. But in classic fashion, as I'm standing here over engineering everything, I realized that I had industrial strength Velcro down in the basement. And well, if it's good enough for space, I'd say it's probably good enough for the Mach-E. So what I did is I put three massive swatches of the hook side on the bottom of this mobile mount. Uh, and then I'm gonna literally use the carpet, which it adheres excellently to this carpet. All right, so I know what you're asking, which is, why is the battery in such a stupid place on the Mach-E? That's a really good question. And honestly, Ford should probably uh, uh, explain that uh, to us uh, because their engineering team definitely uh, screwed us on the placement for this. So to get to the negative terminal, you can get that pretty easy. There's actually access to the nut, I'm making it not focus correctly. To get to the positive terminal, however, it's under the frunk. And to get the frunk out, you need to actually take this panel off you need to take this panel, this frunk panel off, you need to take this panel off, uh, and then all three of these need to come out so that you can get to that positive post. On. Okay, remember how I said I didn't have to take the frunk out and all the different parts off? Yeah, I, I lied about that. So it turns out this battery is even more dumb uh, than you would expect. So here's the inside of a Mach-E, if you've never seen that. Uh, this is a 2023 GT Performance Edition Mach-E. Uh, anyway, to get to the battery, I thought I could slide it forward, but this, doesn't actually allow me to put any sort of uh, fastener, or I'm sorry, uh, terminal under it for the purposes of drawing power. What I needed to do was get under this, and under here is where actually I'm gonna be able to fasten that power. So I need to take this off. Uh, there are some additional clips and whatnot, so we'll pull those off in a moment, but uh, I did want to admit that I thought I was gonna take a shortcut, and it did not work. Look at all this stuff in here, geez. So you can kind of see how this is all set up. This is actually what uh, allows you to take it on and off of the battery. The rest of this is the uh, harness and it's connected uh, to this, this strap basically. So I put my wire right under this particular nut here. Uh, you could feed it under either one of these as well, but I believe those are fused to some level and I don't want to take a chance uh, in uh, shutting down another module. So this is directly off the battery. Uh, so I moved it over to here. I think that's the best option. Uh, and then make sure you tighten everything up again and then bring the, uh, the cover back over. The cover is a real pain in the butt to get off. There are clips here, uh, there are clips here, there are clips here. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, be careful when you take it off because I did mangle my uh, one side of the clip there a little bit, but uh, not a big deal. It'll all fit back on there. So that's how you get it on the positive side. The negative side is actually quite straightforward. Last looks here. So got that uh, all buttoned back up. Cap did go back on and it's not uh, going to fall off. Those clips did hold. So I did uh, stress it a little bit there, but oh well, it's all right. Uh, this can be accessed still. I had to make a slight notch there to allow for the uh, positive positive wire there to pass through out of the uh, out of the um, positive side of the battery. And then on the back side, uh, you can see I had to uh, put it under the terminal that uh, fastens it down to the battery. To do that, because I used a quarter inch ring terminal, I actually had to cut a, a small notch in the front of the ring so that I could slide it over uh, and then fasten it down. So. All right, we're putting a bow on this thing here and uh, just a couple more things to mention. So out came the coax. We've got a little extra loop here, but uh, just attach that so that it doesn't get caught in these clips here. Uh, and then running it along the bar, you can lift up the panel here. There's only two clips and you can run it under here. That'll put it right here in the hinge of the, uh, the uh, hood here and actually uh, lots of room. But the problem is, you can see right now, it's very tight on top. I, I uh, have the wire about as tight as it can go. But when you close it, you need to have that slack there so that the hood can come down. So it does leave a little extra wire here that I don't love, but uh, given 
that when you lift it to, to get into your frunk, uh, it pulls it taut like that. That's as, that's as good as we're gonna get. So that's kind of how this is gonna have to go. Uh, you can see the mount I used is a, uh, a Comet RS520 mount. Uh, this particular mount uh, was about $33, and then I bought the PL259 from Diamond because I like their, uh, their, their way of doing that. And so you can also see this one is adjustable, so you can tip it. You can also uh, turn it uh, this way. So you've got some axes of, of adjustment here. Uh, it's fairly low profile. I wish there was better mounts uh, for these types of small vehicles. But uh, I did put a little bit of PPF, maybe you can see it there, underneath this before I installed it just to protect the paint a little bit more. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and put a Diamond NR770B, which is a ground plane uh, independent antenna. So it'll work even if you're not getting any ground from the vehicle. Uh, it's the best antenna for almost all of these challenging installs. So uh, once we get that installed on here, this thing's going to be ready to rock. All right, it is buttoned up here, and I'll show you how the mount looks. Uh, the RS520 mount, as we talked about, uh, this is absolutely required for the front to open properly. So if you're wondering why I left this big loop, you have to have it. The, the hood slides back, uh, and it takes up that, so it'll damage your antenna if you don't. Uh, again, that's the NR770B. And uh, great antenna for 70 centimeter and two meter, uh, requires no ground plane and gets excellent reception. We had to go back to the drawing board on the bullet point mount. It was way too wobbly on the uh, Maki dashboard. So I uh, printed this plate and uh, added some ribs for stiffness here uh, and used a whole bunch of VHB, not gonna lie. Uh, this is a kind of custom fit for the 500. Of course, I've got it uh, screwed in as well. There's a couple little tabs of VHB just to keep it from rotating. But this is, uh, I think, going to be a more stable solution. It will connect right to the back of the Mach-E screen. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys before I put it in uh, the best laid plans. The first effort did not work, but this should, I think, hold this way more sturdy. So I'm going to go ahead and install it, and we'll see how it looks. All right, that's the Mach-E install end-to-end. -end. If you have one of these and you are a amateur, uh, let us know down in the comments. I'd love to know if other folks are uh, driving these, what they're doing for mobile installs. Uh, the NR770B uh, installed, the diamond mount. Uh, we've got everything buttoned up under the hood, and we'll take a look inside one last time here. So we're ready to rock with this thing. Uh, it is all booted up, and it makes a heck of a lot of noise when you get in. But uh, radio is on already because I've got the car on. Very nice install. I hope you enjoyed uh, the process of going through uh, some of this with uh, one of these mobile installs. Uh, I love and hate doing these. I love buttoning them up and making them look nice and clean, uh, but they can be a real bear. I think the Mach-E is actually one of the easier uh, installs that you can do for a mobile vehicle. So let us know. I'd be real curious if anybody else has done anything cool uh, inside of their new uh, Mach-E. Catch you next time. This is an 8JRD73s, everybody.